And we're back and better than ever. It has been a couple of months since I uploaded a video on the track and that's for a couple of reasons. One, in our house we've all been sick for the last two months and two, I just really haven't been motivated to do anything out of the track. It's been, uh, I guess it's felt sort of like a marathon running the last couple of years and I pretty much have just taken a break and spent more time at home. What we are gonna start in today's video is give you a quick little update on the pond situation. It filled up quite a bit this winter but for those of you that don't know, behind the garage here is what used to be the clay track at what was formerly Copper Creek Motorsports Park. And basically in the center of it, there is a sump basin and a sump pump that uh, runs on AC power and uh, there's a discharge hose and there's a float on it. So when the float reaches the level, just like a sump pump in your basement, uh, the pump kicks on and empties the basin. It's like, it's much, much bigger than like a 55 gallon drum that's buried. It's huge. I don't know what it is. It's a gigantic steel drum, but what you saw out here is the new track truck. This is a 98 Chevrolet Silverado 2500. Of course, it's four by four. It does have a Hineker plow on it, which works great. And we also have a five speed, which uh, plowing, not ideal. I got the hang of it uh, the one time that we did it, but pretty much, I wasn't sure how well the truck was gonna work out, but off camera, I put on a new brake caliper and a hose on this side. We got a window regulator, a windshield. We got the truck tinted by uh, at Superior Tint and Graphics, did a nice job. We got a toolbox that a buddy of mine's letting me use, so that is super handy. Trying to think of what else has been done to it. Not a ton, basically just cleaned it up quite a bit over the last uh, couple of, maybe a month now. But <clears throat> I really think it's gonna serve its purpose out here. It's tough because when we have track days, uh, you know, I have to come out here in my truck because that's what transports all the timing equipment, this, that, and the other. And uh, something happens, we'll for sure have one truck ready and available to move a vehicle, which this is what that's going to become. So I've got some wheel skates. We got a ton of floor dry. We got a lot of stuff just in case there is any sort of a incident or spill or whatever. We do have a good plan going into this year where we should be able to recover a vehicle pretty quickly, get the event rolling again. But anyway, this is the truck. It runs and drives really well. Uh, I didn't, of course, I haven't filmed any video of it because I wasn't sure if it was gonna stick around or if it was gonna make it for more than a month because it was sitting for quite a while before we bought it. But uh, the guy I bought it from was pretty straight up. Um, We'll see how long it lasts, but so far I'm gonna take good care of it. Uh, in a future video, we're gonna give it a really good service and uh, just make sure this thing is dialed. But basically, the point of today's video is that we're gonna restore power to the garage. Now, there's 200 amps of power all the way back here in the track, which doing this today would cost a fortune to get cable buried all the way here from the highway. You know, it's all of a couple thousand feet, I would guess, you know, I would guesstimate, but anyway. This is existing. We got a new main panel installed here a year or so ago. And now we got to reconnect this to a sub panel that's in the garage. It's actually would be considered another main panel, uh, the way that it's actually connected. But this is not an instructional video. Uh, we've got a plan going forward on how to get this all reconnected and then get some power back in the garage because until this point, there is no functional power in here because it's an open, yeah, it's been open since we replaced the panel. So we got a new Square D panel, courtesy of Border States Electrical Supply. So thank you so much to Border States for donating this and a couple odds and ends. Um, they're supporting the track this way, and this is uh, this is going to be totally awesome to have. So pretty much we're going to replace this pretty much one for one. We got to add a ground rod and whatnot to the outside, and then um, we're going to put a service outlet here, and then 
it's going to be quite a project figuring out what cable is missing and where it went in the garage because it looks like it was cut out maybe to up in the ceiling here somewhere but uh, in the walls of course it's pretty much intact so that's pretty much it let's hop right into working on this power and uh we'll see where this video takes us as always we're gonna make sure i know it's open out there but always put a meter on something just double check verify that we're super dead which we are of course uh, i've got one of those little test wigwag blinky uh ac testers which work really well but i'd still like using a regular voltmeter so i can go ahead and start disconnecting all this uh the new panel is going to go replace pretty much one for one i'm thinking it's going to fit in here really good i already checked it fits between where the studs are so that's awesome and uh yeah let's start demoing this one i was wondering this is all aluminum cable uh 200 amps it's a 200 amp panel here as well so that's what i'm replacing it with Unfortunately, that's going to work out. So, left down. yeah, the fellow that was living in here before actually like completely gutted <laughs> everything in here. All right, today's video is brought to you once again by Jack Spania Racing. This is their fabricated LS series intake manifold and throttle body. It also comes with fuel rails, gaskets, fungs, and uh, vacuum adapters that go on the bottom of the manifold. Of course, this one's powder coated black. Um, it's a 92 millimeter throttle body. They sponsored today's video and they're also sponsoring the track this year, so they sent me two of these. Um, if you're gonna be at the Motorhead Madness Show at the deck in Duluth, Minnesota this coming weekend, this will be raffled off there, so you got a chance to win this thing for like 10 bucks. I think that's the number we're working with for a raffle, but you can take this thing home. It's complete, pretty much bolt on your LS series engine kit. And yeah, the finish is really nice on it. The welds are all really nice. I don't see any porosity or any, uh, underfilling or anything like that on them it's actually a pretty nice piece for the money and honestly if you want to be sure you're going to get one of these you can check out the website it'll be at the link in the description you can pick one up for yourself they've also got a whole bunch of stuff for import vehicles as well if you're curious about one of these deals or anything else they got a whole bunch of stuff for honda and i think ej series subaru and toyota products as well so thanks again to jack spawning racing for sponsoring today's video let's get right back into today's action I know I'm gonna need a couple more parts out in the uh, on the main panel outside. So this video will be filmed over many days. Like any good electrician, I'll be leaving a mess when I'm done. Okay, and I think that's the one. Okay, so basically what's happened is it's been a couple hours. I've got my service outlet installed and then I repaired an outlet with a new outdoor rated one outside here. So as you'll see, this will be good to go. It's on a GFI 20 amp outlet. We have the proper gauge wiring and whatnot. So for now, I just put up some more trim in the garage. I'm kind of putzing because it's a nice day and uh, I finally made some time to come out here. But at the door trim back on that side, a little bit of cleaning in here and what i'm doing is starting to organize hand tools like the ones we don't frequently use i'm putting up some hangers and uh, we're just going to kind of get them out of the way so what i'm going to do next is keep putting with this and trying to get a little bit more organized for the summer so everything has a home and we don't have a pile on the floor which uh 
ends up becoming cluttered and whatnot and kind of go from there. So I'm going to keep putzing away and we'll see where we end up today. Okay, so I'm kind of running out of things to hang and I'm um, grasping at straws here. I could buy a couple of, I could buy a new broom and dust pan sort of thing to keep out here because that one's all butchered up. And uh, anyway, uh, get a little bit more organized in here. The garage is cleaned up a little bit. I got the benches all cleaned up and wiped down. I've got my extra cabling for completing the circuit from the panel to the new main panel here. And uh, pretty much what's left is I'm gonna go out to the front of the track and what I've gotta do is put up my new road sign uh, so our fire number is displayed and everything. Uh, I got that last year for whatever reason. I uh, just kinda fell on the back burner and I ended up not putting it on until right now. So let's hop in the track truck, go to the front of the property and get that sign up. Man, it's so crazy driving around out here this time of year with no snow. Like, uh, I think if you remember last year, probably right around now is when we busted a trail in here. And there is no kidding when we were done making snow banks. They had to have been, I don't know, six to eight feet high all over where I'm driving right now. Pretty crazy. This is the least snow I think we've ever had in this area on record. Track's looking pretty good. The tower survived another winter, which is good. Uh, this building has stayed sealed up pretty well and uh, seems to be surviving. So. Pretty much from here out, hopefully we can continue to improve our situation out here at the track. I've got a couple of things to do. I want to mark some of these stakes a little bit better with the fluorescent paint that I have and uh, just make sure things are well marked, uh, you know, for people driving in, in and out and not going into culverts or marking where drain pipes are on the track and whatnot. But anyway, coincidentally where we put our sign for uh, no trespassing and private property and whatnot is actually the exact spot for a private drive where the fire number would end up. So look at the little diagram that the county sent with the sign. Uh, I coincidentally put it exactly where this should end up. So we're gonna mount the sign real quick and then we'll probably be getting out of here. Look at that, beautiful. So, should be a pretty quick job. It's gonna end up right here, and uh, that's pretty much gonna be it. Let's get this thing mounted. What's up? What's up, Brian? Using a hammer? Oh yeah. It's not a hammer, it's a drill. <laughs> it's not a drill, it's a hammer. Yeah, right, they're a multi-tool. I get my... Uh, a little fire number up. Oh yeah. Can I hold yeah. it for you? Yeah. Guys <laughs> driving by, haven't taken the Subaru up for a while. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's Brian. <laughs> yeah, I just got done doing a bunch of stuff in the garage and... All right, that's all done. Let's uh, go back to the garage and finish out this part of today's video. All right, taking a break from the electrical panel change and install. We are going to actually do what I think after chatting with Chad and Andy last weekend is going to be the best option for starting to knock down these cattails in here long term. And what we're going to do is walk around with my buddy Ryan Sicklemower 
and just knock all these down right now all the way around the track and what that's going to do is give us a nice uh it's going to be apparently the best way to get these down and then we'll get a burn permit after all these burn bands are off because we have pretty much no snow this winter we really can't do it now but when the time comes we get a burn permit through the dnr and we'll go around and do basically like a field burning would be uh on a farm field and that's the best way to get rid of all the deadfall that'll be from the cattails so otherwise you have to export it somewhere else in the property and what that would end up doing is just making a big stinky pile of crap somewhere else then you got to move it so the idea is we're going to burn it the little sickle mower that could we used it a little bit last year already and it worked out pretty well so we'll see how it goes uh i think andy here's going to go do a couple laps and i'll get you guys up in the drone and we'll see what the track looks like Is that normal? <laughs> I think there's a chance that the uh the old sickle mower might not be faring too good. We'll see, the engine's taking a beating today. A little bit of glitter on the wall, but she's all right. See if the old track truck can do the trick and pull out this, uh... Oh, you're good to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Remy, 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 come here, come here. Remy. She's like, no. <laughs> come here. Good girl, come here. Got her in granny, granny gear in four high. We'll see if it, uh, wants to peel this thing out. No problem at all. Yep, you're good to go. Sweet. Remy, come here. Remy. Hey there, pup. Remy, come here. Come here. 
Come here. The dip there. You want to lift yeah. your oh. <laughs> You got her. We got most of it. Yeah. Should we make sure, uh, oh God. Ah, uh, that'll go. All right, the uh, light's out of there. We pretty much got it all cleaned up in the middle of the track. Got done doing all the sickle mowing. We're piling up old material and whatnot. So we'll see uh, what we clean up next year. You guys are doing great. Oh. There you go. Yeah, yeah, or higher. <laughs> I guess I need my cup of coffee to stand here. And... <laughs> Method would be a stack it just perfect so you can back up and slam on the brake. <laughs> In the garage. What are they doing? Yeah, inside. Stripping copper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, there's uh, pretty much a truck full. We're gonna pick up some more stuff and get on the burn pile. Man, that that truck is perfect for out here. and speed wise this is it's gonna be the, the silver truck. Yes. Coming. I found I saw you on the camera. Oh, no I'm, they're not stacked. Very good. Dad. It's not by the way. What's that? What's that? Oh.
Alright, so we are once again at the happiest place on earth, the landfill where tires are stored for pickup or recycling. They don't actually just get buried here. Uh, so anyway, we'll get a quick count of how many tires this is and uh, maybe a new total that have been cleaned up from the property since starting the project. Looks like there's a couple left here for seed and here I am with some more. So let's get these outloaded and head back out to the track and start fixing up the power the rest of the way to the garage. Right, check this out. The things you find at the dump. Happy Endings DVD. Somebody's probably missing that right now. All right, looks like about 38 more tires. I forgot to pay attention when I started, but uh, quick count was like 38. So I'm gonna go pay. We'll go get cleaned up and head out to the track and do some more work on the power. So basically we're done working on power for now off the track. We got it done outside on the panel that I showed earlier, but a uh, new interior panel from Border States is actually installed and done. We got an outlet inside and outside. So we've actually got a couple of 20 amp circuits, which is a big deal. So having power in the garage has kind of taken the place out of the stone age, which believe it or not is actually a huge deal out here because the last couple years, um, we ended up running like an extension cord from the garage to way back of this panel here and it works and whatever, but it's kind of a pain. So being able to build off of this and get lighting done in the garage again is actually going to be a big deal. And yeah, so thanks to border States for all that stuff. Without them, I probably still wouldn't have a panel in here because as you guys know, all this stuff adds up really, really quick. So that was a big cost saving. So thanks again to them. From the panel out, we're gonna have to do some repairing and troubleshooting and whatnot. All these ceiling lights, I think we're gonna be able to salvage or put new fixtures up, but we'll do some crawling around upstairs and when we're all done, hopefully we'll get all these lights done and uh, I'll probably end up getting a professional to come help me to make sure I don't torch the place. But that's about it for now. We'll all head outside, check out the clay track and we'll wrap up today's video. Thank you again to Jack Spani Racing for sponsoring today's video. If you're local, like I said earlier in the video, we will be at the Motorhead Madness Car Show this weekend at the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center or the deck. Um, come and check it out. We'll have a whole bunch of track stuff for sale and uh, some kids activities type things. And the clay track is uh, something that I think we're going to have resurrected hopefully by summertime this year. And we're going to be putting laps on it hopefully around then. A friend of mine is promoting karting on it and I'll of course be there helping uh, from start to finish making sure it happens and uh, basically team working it with him as well. Karting is something that I'm not immediately in the orbit of right now but it's something I'm sure I'm going to learn a ton about over the next year. But Anyway, the clay track is drying out and because we had such a light winter and uh, early spring, I think it's going to dry out really quick. We can already walk on it as opposed to last year walking on the clay. You know, you'd sink up to your knees in some spot it seemed like and it was just like glue. So we're better off than ever with the clay track. Come and visit us this weekend at the Motorhead Madness Show. That's pretty much it for today's video. As always, if you want to support the racetrack, hop onto our merchandise link. Right now we've got our 2024 Autocross Series t-shirts available for sale on there. And if you want to pick one up and support the track, you can either do it in person at the deck this weekend, or you can always order one online to your home. And if you want, we've got a ton of other stuff on there as well. So it's one good way you can actually support the racetrack and what we're doing. Uh, as you saw at the beginning of the video, we've got an autocross series again this year. So if you want to try out driving, racing, or spectating, or whatever, definitely come out. We'll have spectator and driver passes for sale for that soon. But that's about it for today's video. Thanks all you guys for watching. There's always something happening and progressing out at the track, albeit slow. But we've only got so much time and uh, money and resources to work with. But I think if anything, this channel will give you a good example of things like that being possible as long as you stick to it. So that's what all I got for today's video. We'll see you guys in the next one.